let me teach you everything that you need to know about Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis is a gram-negative bacillus. It is a zoonotic, non-spore-forming, facultative anaerobe. The name Yersinia pestis, it's actually named for the bacteriologist Alexander Yersin, and pestis meaning plague, because as you'll see in just a moment, this causes the Black Death, also known as plague. So pestis for plague and Yersinia for Alexander Yersin. Dirty, just tell us what we need to know. All right, sorry, sorry, let's get back to this. So this demonstrates something called bipolar staining. Uh, sometimes this will be described as having a safety pin appearance. So bipolar staining, and I'll show you this on just the other slide here, means that on the two opposite ends, you see uh, a cluster of staining at the ends with little teeny outbranching lines running between them. And this is said to look like a safety pin or having a safety pin appearance. And you can see here on this slide where my arrows are pointing to, that is the bipolar staining. And I put a picture of a safety pin up against this. So you can really appreciate, I will agree, this does look like a safety pin. So if you see this picture, this is your cinea. Now the reservoir and the vector are very high yield for some of these bacteria and your cinea is one of them. So rodents and prairie dogs are the reservoir and fleas are the vector. And the flea is what transmits the infections to humans. Generally, this bacteria resides in rodents and it's that flea bite that moves it from the rodents over to the humans and causes plague or black death. Now plague can be in a different few different forms. The clinical forms are either bubonic plague, pulmonic plague, or septicemic plague. And I'll get into each of those individually in a few slides. The most important one for you to understand for USMLE and COMLEX is bubonic plague. Again, here is your safety pin appearance. Pretty unique image, so I would commit this to memory. Now, for virulence and pathophysiology, just a couple things to know here. One, this has a lipopolysaccharide endotoxin. It has a type three secretion system. And remember that with a secretion system, it's kind of like the bacterial product gets injected into the host cell directly. And so there's the presence of this thing called Yersinia associated outer proteins or YAPs. And the YAPs are what get injected through the type three secretion system. Once those get into the host cell, they inhibit phagocytosis and inhibit different metabolic pathways, which makes the bacteria essentially grow out of control and evade immune response from the host. The other thing that's interesting about Yersinia is that it demonstrates calcium variable virulence. So basically, this bacteria adjusts depending on the calcium concentration in the host around it. And so obviously, humans and rodents have varying degrees of intracellular calcium concentrations. And if the Yersinia is in its reservoir in the rodent, it can survive. And when it gets transmitted into a host cell, that calcium concentration is different. But one of the ways that Yersinia can persist is that it can adapt to the variable calcium concentration. So just a little bit of an interesting aside there, but memorize the endotoxin, the type three secretion system injecting the YAPS, and calcium variable virulence. Clinical findings are really the big area that test writers like to, to nitpick on exams. So when it comes to plague, as I said, there are three different types. There's bubonic, pneumonic, and septicemic. And these different plagues tell you which organ system or which part of the body the plague is primarily, primarily targeting. So if it's bubonic, it's in the lymph nodes. If it's pneumonic, it's in the lungs. And if it's septicemic, it's in the bloodstream. Now the highest yield of these three is bubonic. So let's cover that one in greater detail. And then I'll go over pneumonic and septicemic in just a moment. So for bubonic, bacteria from the flea bite gets into the dermal lymphatic system. And once it's in the dermal lymphatic system, it starts to replicate. And this is why you see the development of what are known as buboes. Buboes are referred to suppurative lymphadenitis. So unilateral, swollen, painful lymph nodes that can have the presence of an eschar, they can be pustular, they can be vesicular, but bottom line, a bubo is a painful swollen lymph node. And 
because the bacteria, the Yersinia, is replicating in the dermal lymphatics as it gets, as it replicates, as that bacterial load grows, so too do the lymph nodes. And those lymph nodes become obviously painful, swollen, enlarged. They can become pustular. There can be the presence of an SR, which is going to kind of look black and discolored, and they can become vesicular. These are called buboes, and they represent the process, the, the disease process or the clinical syndrome of suppurative lymphadenitis. This is the key finding in bubonic plague. Now, in addition to these buboes, you can see more generalized symptoms like fevers, chills, nonspecific symptoms like headache, weakness, and if left untreated, this can progress to shock and death. So that is bubonic. Bubonic means buboes. Buboes means painful lymph nodes. Now let's talk briefly about pneumonic and septicemic. Again, I want to be very clear that bubonic is the highest yield version of this that tends to show up most often on USMLE and Comlex. But if the test writer woke up on the wrong side of the bed and didn't get their coffee in the morning, they'll go after pneumonic or septicemic. So let's cover it just to be complete. Pneumonic is due to the inhalation of droplets. This leads to cough, chest pain, hemoptysis, fever, and this can be plus or minus buboes. So sometimes they'll be present here, but you don't need the presence of buboes to have pneumonic plague. And this leads to rapidly progressive pneumonia. So obviously pneumonic means it's in the lungs. Because it's in the lungs, the key symptoms to look out for are hemoptysis and rapid progressing pneumonia. Septicemic means it's in the bloodstream. So that's the replication of Yersinia in the bloodstream. Now, when this happens, you tend to get involvement of the GI tract or meningitis because since the Yersinia is replicating in the bloodstream, it's going to spread. If it spreads to other organ systems, then you're going to involve the GI tract and get into the brain. So you get meningitis. But the thing about septicemic on your exam is that the test writer will tell you that it has progressed to disseminated intravascular coagulation. And if left untreated, this almost always results in death. So septicemic is, is pretty fatal, and you want to look for the lab markers for DIC if they're going after septicemic. The bottom line here, bubonic is buboes and lymph nodes. Pneumonic is lungs, hemoptysis, and pneumonia. Septicemic is meningitis, GI symptoms, and DIC. If you can keep those three things in those three different boxes, I think you're in pretty good shape here. For treatment, briefly, you use aminoglycosides and fluoroquinolones. You can also secondarily use tetracyclines, but the big answers are going to be aminoglycosides and fluoroquinolones. So that is Yersinia pestis. Good luck.